Hey guys, it's Meme, and if you have been following along on this journey with me, you will know that we have our mailbox completely covered, including the inside. I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out, and now it is time to work on our mini album, which some of you have probably been waiting on for a while. Here's the thing about this mini album, okay? I'm going to kind of cheat it because that's just the way I want to do it. I did not measure these pieces um, in kind of anticipation for how I would cover them. So I'm just going to show you how I'm going to do it. And I think you'll be happy with it too because we won't have to do any measuring or thinking. So these are, I'm going to be using the same paper pack, by the way, which is um, Christmas Stories from Mente. These are scraps from where I was covering the uh, mailbox, and I'm going to use it to cover my mini album. And again, this is not traditional. It's not how I would normally do this, but I'm going to trace and cut out so I don't have to measure. I just do not want to measure. You ever just had, well, not ever had. Y'all know me well enough to know I'm not a measurer. So I'm literally going to just trace this onto the page that I want to cover the flap with. And for me, it is this blue. I want this top piece to be blue, and I also want this top inside piece to be the blue. I'm not going to stress about the orientation of this wood. I think it'll look kind of cool for it to have different um, orientations inside. So, like, one wood is going to go one way, one's going to go the other, and I'm not going to stress about it. Because by the time I put pictures on it, it's not going to matter anyway, right? So, there's those two flaps done. And while I'm here... I'm going to see, because you know, over here we have these other flaps that are smaller. I want to see if I can get one out of here too. I don't think, I might can after I cut these out, but for now, I'll just hold on to those. We'll do them later. Here's the other thing about this, this album. So I don't want it to have a lot of rhyme or reason. I'm trying really hard to kind of let the paper inspire me. And I feel like there's a lot of places in this paper that it doesn't have a lot of rhyme or reason. And I don't want this to either. I know that may sound strange, but I'm just going to play. Like, I am not going to be afraid. I'm just going to, just like this, grab paper and go and see what happens. I know I've saved um, some of my favorite papers for um, some spots. You know, like, I know I didn't use my favorites in places I didn't, didn't, you know, I didn't waste them on the cover or on the mailbox. And I also know that I saved some of my favorite cut-aparts to use as well. So look, there's that piece done. Now I wanna tell you this, if you're scared of your scissors, and I know some of you do not like your scissors, here's what you can do. You can just messily cut this out. I don't wanna to waste too much paper. So I'll just messily cut this out and then I'll show you what you can do. You can grab your trimmer and especially this line, it is a straight line, okay? So you can just put that into your trimmer and slice up it just like that. And then you can do the same thing over here. Um, you'll need to cut that little bit off first. You'll need to line it up first. Get that little guy. And then you can slice this piece off. I'm not, I'm literally going to not stress. I'm going to try to relax and have fun with this process. And if it's not perfection, I'm not going to stress about it. All right, for that little piece at the top, you can use your corner rounder and round it if you don't want to use your scissors. I know a lot of you don't enjoy your scissors as much as some do. I don't mind them, but there you go. I got the same process using my trimmer or my scissors either way. Look at how different these look. Look, doesn't this one look bigger? Isn't that strange? It's such an optical illusion. I literally had to test it. Okay, now let's go back to our little album. And I'm kind, I'm kind of literally kind of, um, doing some Brenda work here. If you don't know, some of you keep going, who's Brenda? I know you don't all know her because she's not on my channel much, but I, she's a friend of mine who really just does not overthink a project. She just does it and she's happy with it and she moves on. So that's kind of the tracing and the cutting out part. So these two will fit here perfectly. Now that is covering the entire piece and I may do that, but I may not. I may decide to trim some off so I can get a better bend because this is going to give me a little bit of resistance. So I may trim some from here, but I'm going to go ahead and get my other pieces cut before I do that. So I've cut this piece and this piece. I want to flip this guy over and now I want to cut this piece and this piece. So let me find what I'm cutting those out of. So now what I can do is use these pieces as my pattern. Now I wanna caution you real quick. Remember this, your two outside envelopes are smaller. So don't go to town and cut all of them using this pattern. We need four pieces in the middle envelope size and we'll need eight pieces in the outside envelope side. So don't go crazy cutting using this as your pattern. Just do four with this pattern, all right? So I'm gonna come, I think I'll go like this. On the back of this is just the advent, which I'm not using. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this just like this. 
and just trace these and cut them out and then I'll have my other two pieces done. You might have seen just then that I went ahead and traced my side panels as well. So these are my smaller pieces I'm doing now. So I'm just going to go ahead and get these guys cut. I need eight of them. So I'm just going to find the pages that I want to use and cut eight. And I thought while I was cutting on this um, advent paper, you know, because it's advent on the back, I thought I might as well get some more of these. And I like the red. I like the pops of red in this album. Are you surprised I like the pops of red? Probably not. So I'm going to go ahead and cut eight of these guys. And I want to show you another trick. If you're using the Mente paper, I want to show you another trick for getting the most out of your paper. So on this paper, I know I'm going to want to use this somewhere else. If not in this album, I at least want to use these pretty images somewhere else. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in here to the middle where the paper's kind of solid and it's no images. And I'm going to use some of this. And I know this has been very controversial. Like I cannot believe how many people are really kind of shocked um, that I'm cutting this paper, but that's what it's for, right? It's supposed to be cut. And I may not even use this side. I may use the other side as my um, little piece here, but I don't want to waste any of my pretty images because I might want to use those somewhere else. So I'm going to cut that one from there and see how I can use the green side if I want, which I probably will. So there's one and I need five more. So another thing to look at is this, especially on this paper. I think this is really pretty, and I think it would look really good on one of the flaps. So I'm going to actually cut this to get that piece out. So I'm going to trace this over here, like so, because I think that would be pretty on a flap, that little bit of, like, um, mistletoe. And I might even like this side. I'm not as sure about this side because, let me turn this like this, because it might end up being upside down. Let me look at that and see. I don't know, I think that'll be fine. I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna cut this one as well. And that gives me two more pieces. So I have this scrap laying around. I'm gonna get one out of it. Okay, so I got them all cut out. And I gotta be honest, I was kind of dreading that. That wasn't bad at all. <laughs> it, it really wasn't, I was surprised. Okay, so let's decide how much, if any, I'm gonna cut from the base for this to be able to close better. Let me open this up so you can see what we're working with fully. So remember the middle is our largest one. All I'm really concerned about is whenever I get this all glued on front and back, this is gonna thicken up and you can see already how much that's pushing it away. I definitely want to cut some off of here. I'm gonna start with a quarter of an inch and see what happens. Let me get my trimmer. So I'm just gonna sit this on here for the time being. And let me show you how I'm gonna do this. So on my trimmer, there is a mark that shows me a quarter of an inch right there. I'm just gonna line this up to that mark. I'm sure your trimmer has a quarter of an inch mark as well. I'm just gonna make sure it's nice and even. I'm gonna sink my blade and go up and down. And so that will cut one quarter of an inch away, okay? And I think that's probably gonna be enough, but I didn't wanna do it until I checked. So I want these to go all the way to the edge. That's why I traced them. You see that? So it's gonna cover the whole thing. But now look, I'm clear right here. So when I'm closing, I have plenty of room not to stress. So I'm just gonna run through with all of these real quick and cut that quarter of an inch off and they will be exactly what I need. So these are all my little quarter of an inch strips. I'm not gonna get rid of them because you never know where I might could use those. So I'm gonna sit those aside with my other paper. Now I'm gonna start to glue. I think I'm gonna glue the blue ones on the outside, I really think those are pretty, I'm gonna put those on the outside and put the red ones on the inside. So remember, I'm working with my two largest ones first. That's the only thing you really have to focus on is make sure you put the large ones in the middle. And you can do that by stacking your triangles up together and you can easily see which ones are the large ones. And I'm gonna line this up even at the top, which makes it even easier, just like so. Now, I have cut this by hand. 
means it's not going to be perfect. Do you see this edge that's got a little piece that I need to clean up? It's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clean it up and I'm not gonna stress. And I'll probably hit this entire thing with a little bit of distress ink to hide all the issues because <laughs> there will be issues, I promise. All right, so I'm gonna run through the album and glue all of my little, they look like house tops, my little envelope tops down. So I feel like I should warn you about something because this is going to bother some of you and I want you to see how to fix it. Remember how we did our envelopes by hand? You remember we did these little cuts ourselves just by eyeballing? That means all of these are a little bit different. So if you want to make sure you're tracing exactly the shape, you're going to want to trace every single one of your um, flaps. But I wasn't too worried about that because here's my plan. You can see how that doesn't match up very well. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Let me get this in screen where you can see it. I want to do it this way so you can see what I'm doing. So I'll flip that back. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just take my scissors and right here where it's not perfect, I'm just going to clean that up. It won't matter. It won't hurt anything. It'll actually give us even more room in our bend. And I'm running through and anywhere that I have some that doesn't match up, I'm just cleaning it up just like that and making them match. And like I said, it's actually going to give you an even better fold when it's done. Happy accidents is what I call it, because if we're trimming a little bit of that bulk out of the way, see those all look up oh, this end one doesn't look so great. Let's get this guy. This guy is like a puzzle piece, but it'll be better. This is the hardest part, and I wanted to start with it and get it over with. Covering these flaps is the hardest part. And I want to show you this because some of you will worry that you messed up if this happens to you and you didn't. Remember, it wasn't perfect when we started. So you see how I've got some hanging over right there? I'm going to trim that away as well. I don't need it, and it will actually get in the way. And it's just because I traced one of these instead of every single one of them, and I just need to cut that away. And now it's perfect on both sides, and it's nice and covered, and you won't see the mistake. That might bother you. It really doesn't bother me. I'm probably going to leave that because I can ink that and get rid of it. But that is my flaps covered. I also noticed that some of my flaps, or some of my lines are crooked. I'm not going to worry about that because I'm going to be decorating that. I can fix that. So... Not too worried about all of that. I'm not stressing over this album, y'all. I think it's going to be cute when it's finished, no matter how stressy I do or how stressy I don't, right? So that is the beginning of our covers. Now we need to do our other little blank pages. Okay, so I've cut my first piece. This center piece here, I need to mat. Remember how I told you these would go away? We wouldn't be able to see them. So I'm going to mat it with this piece. I could mat it with this piece, which is just as beautiful, and I just might because that's awful pretty. But this piece is three and seven eighths by six and three fourths, but I'm going to challenge you to measure for yourself, okay? Because of the way this was assembled, you may be slightly different than mine and what have you, so make sure you measure. And I'm only trying to leave about an eighth of an inch all the way around, so if that'll help you with your measurements, just remember that. Look how beautiful, I'm leaving that poinsettia up. I'm still gonna put stuff on top of it, but I think it'll be beautiful. Although I love this blue side too. Now, that one is the big one. Remember, that's the big middle. And also, this back side is the big middle. Now, I don't want to do this one yet because I want to add ribbon as my closure and I want to glue it under here, but I don't want to fight the ribbon the entire time I'm doing the album. So, I'm going to save that one blank for now. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and measure these guys so I can cut what I need to go in um, to go here. So, I have run through and I've cut a lot of pages. I cut eight pages to cover the rest of these, right? And I strategically cut from my page to get these pretty scenes because I just think it'll be pretty and we can add different elements here and there. And because of my extra flaps, I have lots of real estate. So even if this just gets a journaling spot, it'll be fine. But look how pretty that is. I just love that. So I'm going to glue that down. And I may not, like I said, it may just get some journaling or it may hold the date. Who knows what may go on here. But I just love the images. So I'm just going to place these around strategically, just kind of paying attention to where I'm putting them, deciding where they're going to go, and cover all these pieces front and back.
want to show you guys something. Do you see how beautiful that is? So I decided on my ends that instead of putting them over this flap, I'm going to tuck my envelope pieces into the flap because it's just too beautiful. So when I put this guy together, that's how I'm going to do it, where my envelopes go together like that and then fold up and fold down. It's just too beautiful. I couldn't stand it. Those images are so pretty. And remember, this is going to get ribbon and another piece, which I've already picked out for it, but not right this second. Okay, now what I want to do, and this is going to be a job, okay? I want to ink all of this. I want to go through and ink every little edge. So I'm going to cut away. Let me show you how I'm going to do it so you'll know, but this is going to take me a minute. So I'm just going to do it off camera, but just to show you what I'm doing. So I'm going to use some vintage photo, right? And like up here around all the edges, front and back, I'm going to ink just by using an ink blending tool and just running around. And what that'll do is just kind of hide any imperfections or just blend everything together. And I'm not just going to do it on my pattern paper. I'm going to do it in between as well. Let me finish this one and then I'll flip it and show you how I'm going to do that. Okay, so for that inside edge that's hard to get to, I'm going to turn this back, okay, and I'm going to ink that edge. And if it gets on my paper, that's fine because I'm looking for a little inked kind of distressed edge all the way, everywhere. So that's why it's going to take me a while. I thought I would cut away to do this, but that's what I'll be doing. See how it kind of makes it kind of rugged or kind of distressed? Let's flip this over and do the other side. So I've just flipped this over, and now I'm going to do the back side the same way. Okay. I distressed this guy, and I'm going to tell you something. Me and this album got to know each other real well. <laughs> I distressed every single white edge of this album, and I feel like I'm going to see one that I missed because that was quite a process. Oh, I don't see one, but it's very distressed. So, that was probably the hardest part. I might have missed that edge. No, I see ink. Hmm, I don't know. I might have missed some edges. Okay, I am finally to what I call the fun part. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to close this up. And remember, I decided to close my flaps in because I love this part. So I'm going to close these little flaps like so. And I'm going to close this whole guy up. And the only thing I haven't covered is this, but I know what's going there. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the paper pack. You get two sheets of this. And on one side, it's cut aparts, And on the other, it's frames. I'm going to be using these frames in this album everywhere I can put them. I think they are so cute. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut this apart. Now, I plan to only use one sheet. The other sheet, I'm going to use the cut aparts for decorating with. So I'm just going to run through and cut these out. And I don't know yet if I'm going to use just the frame or if I'm going to use this whole piece. So I want to go ahead and cut the whole piece out because I might like the little border around it, but I might want to cut out and just use the frame. So let's start right here, for example. This is one of my little frames I cut out. And do you see how it looks right here? I think this is so cute. But I think I do want just the frame without that edge. So let me cut that off. Now look how cute this is. And I can angle it like that. Isn't that precious? I love these. It can even go this way. It can even go straight up and down. And I could get two on here, this little frame. I love how these look. Let's see if we put one beside it. So look, we can put one beside it, even kind of low, so it kind of looks like a like a gallery wall. Isn't that cute? I love this. Let's see what it looks like if I put this one here. I just like to look, and this one kind of lower. Either one is super cute. I think that's where these frames are going to live because I want to put pictures in here. Let me tell you the size of these. Now, you may or may not know, but I use an app called Print to Size, and I can literally make my photos the size I need them to be. And so for these little guys, I would make my photos two and three-fourths by two, and I'd be able to get them in here with a little bit of the edge showing, and so that will be fine. I'll just have all my little photos inside these little frames. So I'm going to run through and put these frames everywhere I can because I think they're adorable. Notice that I'm gluing them straight down. I want to talk about that real quick. This album is going to get bulky enough. I don't need to add any foam or dimension to it because it is going to get plenty bulk as I add these. And then when I come back and I add in the um, photos, it's even going to get a little bulkier. So I don't want to add any foam anywhere. So I'm not going to put anything on these sides because I think they're beautiful and I may literally let them stand alone. If I do anything, I may add a frame to one side, but let's see how far we can go with these. So I'm going to open up the inside and I want to show you, these don't really fit here. They're a little too big for the flaps and that's okay. I'm going to focus on more inside. So let's look. Oh, this one will be pretty right here. Put a picture frame there. So pretty. 
I really think this frame is cute here. I know it covers up that little house, but honestly, the cup is what I think is so cute. So I'm going to add this one there. So I was able to use all but two of them. These are the only two that aren't here. And who knows, I can use them somewhere, maybe in the album. But here's the back. And naturally, I flipped it upside down. Here's the front. So I have two here. And then in here, we have one, two. And then on the other side, we have two here as well. And yes, I did one on an angle. Don't paint it. We're going to decorate it up. All right, let me go to my little cut aparts and see what I have that I want to put in other places. So you guys remember I cut all of these out using the Scan and Cut, and I thought these would be cute to add to the album. All these little cut aparts, they're kind of laying down here in my hand. Here we go, I'm bringing them up for you to see them. And I just think they'll be cute in different places around the album. So I'm just gonna evaluate pages individually. You know what I'm saying? Just look at each one and see what I wanna add. Now, another thing, I want to use these flaps for journaling. So I don't wanna cover this whole piece. I'm considering not covering them at all just yet and waiting and using them for journaling and then covering, putting extra pieces on later. So I may, probably will, just work through the inside here. But let's look, like right here, these little um, picture frames are so cute. And in this little lantern, cute like this. And what you can do, I know this is, you know, frames, you can glue this down only in the middle and leave the edges open. So when you put your pictures in, you tuck it underneath or you can stop here, put your photos in and then finish. That's up to you. But I'm going to run through and see what I can put on now that I think will be cute between now and when I've got pictures to put in it. So let's just see. These two little cookies are kind of cute right there, aren't they? That is cute. I gotta show you what I did. I had this on my scan and cut mat and I tore it, but I just tore the cookie. So I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of fussy cut that edge off and still use it. I think I'm just gonna come in here and just cut away that little cookie because I think I can still use this little cup. It's too cute not to try. And I really would like it right here in the middle. But I'm going to do a little more editing to it. I don't really care for this little stir stick that's kind of sticking up in the sky. It's kind of just in my way. And let's see if I like that better. I do. I think that'll be cute glued down to the middle. And then I can put a picture underneath and a picture here. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm not going to put glue here, okay? I'm going to put glue here. And I know that this piece can go there. And I'm also going to put a little bit of glue on the candy cane. And that will glue this guy into place, okay? And I'm not gluing the edges. None of the edges are going to be glued down. Now, I can come back after... I put my photos in and glue them down, but I want to be sure that I can get underneath here with my photo, and that way I won't have to worry about, you know, trying to cut around this when I go to decorate. Because remember, it's going to be, you know, next year before I put any pictures in it, because this is for Christmas this year. All right, so glue at the top of this tree, and I will glue it here, but not down to the frame. I'm leaving that open so I can put um, a photo there, and the same here, I'm going to put glue at the top, and leave the bottom open. Again, I'll be able to glue it down once I put my pictures in, but I don't want to impede being able to put a picture here. I think that makes sense. I don't want to beat that point too long. All right, let's go to the next spot where we can add some goodies. Here's something. Let's see what we can put maybe up here or around there. How about a little package right here? That would be cute. Add that right there. And what else have I got over here? Some little ornaments might be cute. Let's see what they look like. Maybe hanging from up here. Oh, that might be cute. Just kind of dangling like that. Yep, I like that. I need to clean this one up. My scan and cut saw something here that I don't see. Just a little bit of a little like bump, a little jut out, and one here as well. Just clean that up a little bit. And again, I'm not going to glue these to where they're glued down. I'm going to glue the sides of this one. So I can still get a photo in there. So that photo will still slide underneath. And then here, I will glue the top portion down. You see where I can glue it. That looks good. Now, in the real world, if I was not doing a YouTube tutorial on this project, I would not be doing this now. This is something I would do after I put my photos in, I would save all of my extra pieces and I would put all my photos in and then do this part. But you guys always want to see some of the decorating. And I understand that. I do too. 
So I'm just gonna show you a way around that. So here you can see I've left open and I've left it open. So a photo, let's pretend this is a photo, could still slide underneath. That one's kind of snug, but he's not glued down. See that I can still slide a photo under there and that's what you wanna be able to do, okay? All right, so let's do this one. I have this pretty little deer. I think he would be pretty right there. I just think he would be so pretty kind of nestled over here. And he, I really could glue down. Let's see what else I could put with him. So do y'all remember, remember me telling you this lantern had the top cut off of it? I don't really think it looks bad. I think it is okay. I think I'm gonna use it anyway, even though the top cut away and it just cut the bow out. I really like it. I think I'm gonna put that behind my little deer, something like that. Let's see what else I can add, if anything. I'll just add these two pieces. They'll be pretty right there and they'll add a little something, something. And these I can glue straight down because they're not gonna go on the picture frame. Now, I can overlap this. See how I can overlap that? And then I would need to leave one side um, unglued so it could go under there. But I'm gonna nestle them down a little bit low and I'm not, I'm not covering up where the picture will go. That's really cute. Okay, let's go to the other side. So I have these two little houses that I think would be pretty right here in the middle and it wouldn't cover up my big pretty red poinsettia right there. I'm gonna put these guys down. I think they'll be cute. With the little houses, this might be a cute spot to maybe put my Christmas tree picture or something. Wouldn't that be cute like the little houses? Okay, and then, and I've been waiting to do these because I'm in love with these. I have these two big ornaments. I have this one and then I have this blue one and I want them to live right here. Look how this paper does the work for you. Are you kidding me? It's incredible. So I'm gonna glue this down, but I need to leave that little section open so that a photo can go underneath it. So be mindful of where you're gluing. I'm gonna glue that where it's at the top up there. Leaving that open so I can put a photo there. I really don't even have to, but I'm going to just to be safe. And then I'm gonna put this guy at the top and I can glue him directly down because he won't be in the way of anything. This paper is so pretty, it is so pretty. Okay, now let's see. So that's the inside, pretty decorated. Let's look at these little back panels we've got here. Perfect, I have to show you. So I have these two lanterns left over. I have this one here, and then I have this one here, which I think would be so pretty between them. And maybe for some outdoorsy pictures or something, like maybe for at the Christmas lights or something like that. I think that'd be pretty. So I'm gonna put glue through the middle of these and glue it between. And I'm not gonna worry about, actually this one could be glued all the way down, but I'm gonna leave it open just in case. It won't hurt anything, it'll be glued there. And then this one right here, I'm gonna glue it a little bit more in the middle because I've got a little more room on this one. And then glue it straight down to the middle. I just think those are pretty there. And I just have two more little cut aparts here. This little package, which I think would be cute sitting right there. And then I have a little cookie that I think I'll put here just to add, because I don't want to leave them for no reason, right? Let's use them if we've got them. So I'm leaving that side open so a photo can go underneath it. And then I'm gonna glue this little guy down. Okay, let's add our ribbon here. Now, let me show you how I'm gonna do that. So I wanna close this with the same gold ribbon I used on my mailbox. And what I wanna do is I want to sandwich some ribbon underneath the piece that's gonna go here so it can tie in the front. And I always leave myself too much and I'll do the same again this time, I'm sure. But you wanna leave yourself some ribbon and you can measure if you want to. You can like close the album and wrap it around and make sure it'll work, but I think I'm in good shape. So what I'm gonna do is find the middle of my ribbon. I think I'm in good shape. How many craft projects have gone awry, right? <laughs> okay, so I found the middle of my ribbon. It's right here. So I'm gonna glue this down. And this way, when I put my little piece on, it'll sandwich and it'll hide and you won't see it. So I'm gonna just glue this into place and I want it to be as close to the middle as I can get it. I love an envelope album tied with a ribbon because I think it looks like um, like love letters, like old fashioned love letters or something that um, someone would have saved from like the war or something like that. I just love, you know, the romanticism of a ribbon tied envelope. Okay, so I need to let that dry while I cut out my piece that's going here. So the piece that's going there, this one that says Merry Christmas. Now it's just gonna fit. So I'm gonna have to do some work here and let me show you what I'm gonna do. I have to cut this right to this S, even taking the tiniest bit of that pennant off, just like so. 
and then I need to cut it the width that I need it. Now I'm gonna cut it just a little over three and three fourths, just a tiny bit, because I have a little bit of room on that piece. Remember, this is the bigger piece in the middle. So a little over three and three fourths. And now I'm going to cut it down just to that C. I just um, checked to see if this would work. So I just know that this is how much I need to fit on the back. But you can measure, obviously, and won't that be pretty right on the back? So my top and bottom height is right, but I was a little bit off on my guessing. So let me measure and see exactly how much I need. So I can fit, I can fit the whole word on, but I need to cut about a quarter of an inch off. So let me do that. So I just went to my trimmer and just sliced and sliced until I got it in there where it would just fit and say Merry Christmas. It's perfect. I'm very happy with that. Okay, and now we're gonna sandwich our ribbon down into the album, onto the album back. That'll dry and help to hold our ribbon in place and it's perfect. All right, let's close our album. See why I didn't wanna work with that ribbon the whole time? I would have been fighting it while I was turning it and inking it and all that good stuff. All right, so I wanna close my little flaps like this and bring this one over. Close this little flap and bring it over. And then these guys go in. Either way you want to do them, it doesn't matter, look how cute this is. And then this one goes up, this one comes down, and now our ribbon ties our mini album. And I always leave myself too much ribbon, that is just who I am. And won't this be cute in your post office box, your little mailbox that you made and to remind you of little love letters. Now, you will need to leave yourself a little bit of extra ribbon because it's gonna get a little thicker when you put your photos in. So don't cut this too short. I'm gonna leave myself probably an inch and a half on either side extra, just so I can have a little bit of growth when I put my photos in. Look how cute this is. Here's the front and look, doesn't it look like a little vintage envelope, a letter that you would have received? I Love it. Now, I gotta put my pen in my glue before I forget, but I wanna tell you this. Again, I would have waited. I would have stopped with my frames and put my photos in later, but that's okay. I wanna show you how it kinda works. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna take all your leftovers and you wanna put them into the bag that your paper comes in or a big envelope, and you wanna save this all together because you still have so many little pieces here and there you can use in your album. For example, these pieces that are kind of this light blue, I can cut some of these away and use them for journaling, make ribbon tabs out of, anything I want to write on, these are perfect for that. The These pictures that I can cut out and place wherever I might wanna place them, the little bales, all of these pieces. Now, you may decide you want to use these on another project now, and that is perfectly fine because you can always use something different in your album. But I always think it's smart if this is what, if I want it to match, to put this away until I decorate. So that's what I will do. I will put this away and it'll be what I use to finish. And even here, this can be a journaling spot. I can punch any of this out if I want to use a punch. Anything I want to do to kind of decorate my little flaps where I'm going to journal about Christmas. So there you go. Let's bring the uh, mailbox over. You got to see it in its home. So here's our mailbox. I wanna remind you what it looks like, remember? All this is from the same paper pad and I still have so much left. I mean, so much. My little bell's on the front. And so this guy will now live right inside of here. And let me show you, it is nowhere near full. You will be able to add so many more of these. From measuring only, I got that you could get about seven in there, but after I see the bulk, it might be about five, but still, how beautiful. And if you don't put a ribbon, if you use like a magnetic clasp, it'll even take up some of this bulk, but I just think this is so beautiful in here. And when people come over and they're like, oh, what's in this little mailbox? Look and see, it's Christmas past, or for me, future, because I'm waiting on photos. <laughs> there you go, guys. I love this project. It has been a fun project, a long one, one that'll take you a little bit of time, but so fun, and I hope you enjoy making it as much as I did for you. Now, remember, I have a lot of stuff coming. We have so many Christmas projects coming. Go ahead and subscribe. Just subscribe to my channel so that you won't ever miss out on a video, and be sure to click the notification bell. That notification bell allows you to set what kind of notifications you want from my channel, and then it'll let you know if I'm live or if I'm doing a project, 
And if you're making something that I have inspired you to make, I want to see it. We have a customer gallery just for that. Head to our customer gallery and share your photos. We love it. And if you need inspiration, we have over 2,000 photos over there for you guys to see the projects that have been shared. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you do. Give it a big thumbs up. And until next time, bye-bye.